Well, it's uh, July 10th, 2021, and today I'm going to talk to you about a decision I made with purchasing a rototiller, and I'll go over that as well. So it's a prime attachment rototiller that's right over there. But uh, last year I bought this uh, rock and brush grapple for uh, Hound, which is a Komatsu CK35-1 track loader. And this, this piece of equipment has been amazing. It works like, like nobody's business. And uh, this, I also bought the hydraulic controlled forks from Prime Attachments here this last year, uh, which allows me from inside to be able to adjust the forks. This has been absolutely fantastic, this set of forks as well. So this year I, I knew I wanted to get a rototiller. I was very questionable about it, and I'll go over that in just a moment. I also bought this tree puller. And this, all these hook, hook onto the front of uh, skid steers, track loaders and all. And this thing here works amazing. It grabs a hold of the trees. I can pull them out without dis dis disrupting the soil around a tree that's real close to it. Same thing with bushes and all. And I also bought this uh, receiver attachment for the track loader. But the thing I had ordered uh, last year was this uh, 84 inch uh, heavy duty uh, rototiller that hooks onto the front of the track loader. And I used it the day before yesterday uh, for the first time. Uh, in shipment, uh, uh, FedEx, when they're shipping it, damaged the flat face coupler and uh, so a couple of hydraulic hoses there for the tree puller. Prime attachments shipped those out right away. Absolutely fantastic and all. So the rototiller, uh, I talked to a few people and I told them, I said, we've really got rocky, rocky ground here. And most people told me, don't even bother trying a rototiller and all. But I have had a couple of people tell me, oh yeah, these will do great. Now this machine works flawlessly. Uh, it's heavy duty. Uh, the good thing about uh, having a rototiller on the front of a track loader is that the hydraulics, you can have the tines either go in a, uh, in a traditional rotation, or it can go forward and reverse. So you can, you can direct the hydraulics to spin. So if you get something that starts to catch like a big rock or whatever, or, or a big root, uh, you can just uh, get it out without shearing pins or without having to get out and, and uh, unclog the unit. So this thing is absolutely fantastic. Uh, so we're gonna go over uh, the reason that I'm gonna end up selling it now. It's because of our property. Our property is all gravel and all, but we'll show you. In 2012, we put in the solar panel arrays here. And when we put the solar panel arrays in, we're also clearing the area back there where you see the tarps in the background. And so we had lots of trees and brush and stumps and all. So we dug out uh, a wide pit right along in this area here. And we took all the tree trunks and, and limbs and uh, root balls and the foliage and all, and we buried it in here and we covered it back up with the native soil that was here. And, and that's what I call a hugelkultur pit. And they have been absolutely great on our property for increasing the amount of carbon in the soil and uh, an organic material in the soil and reducing the rock to, to soil ratio that we have here on our property because it's a high rock to soil concentration. Now there's still some rocks here. So that was in 2012, we put the hugel culture pit in. And we grew crops because I put mounds of compost and then wood chips on either side of the mounds. We grew potatoes here, amaranth, a whole variety of different crops in here, and uh, mangels, those great big beets as well we grew in this area. And that all worked out pretty well, but we didn't want to do gardening this far back. So I said, no more doing gardening back here. It was a hassle coming all the way back here to, to do gardening stuff. Uh, and we have water irrigation to both of these areas here. And uh, so the next thing I did was about five or six years ago, I dumped a lot of wood chips here, probably two to two and a half feet deep of wood chips here, and I let them decompose. And then I put 
compost in two different rows and we grew raspberry bushes here and boy those raspberry bushes took off like crazy and all and we 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 created benign neglect in other words we we let the drip irrigation take care of the uh, raspberry plants which proliferated and made tons of raspberries for us but eventually the quack grass and the birds pokeweed and those seeds got in here and all and so this last uh fall and this spring i pulled out all of those and I took the rototiller in here, and since there's a relatively low ratio of rocks to soil, yes, there are rocks in here. A rototiller can work great on a piece of property like this, uh, where there's relatively few rocks, and you can, we'll walk around here a little bit and you'll see the number of rocks. If the rest of my property was like this, this would be manageable. I could rock, I could rent a, uh, Oh, a uh, rock hound, which can pick up the rocks and shake out the soil when the soil is dry and all, and remove a number of rocks from this area here and use this to, to garden and all. And I was hoping that the other area, because this is the main area, and there's other places on the property that I want to work with as well, uh, that the rototiller would help me to do an initial establishment. Now, we're a minimum till uh, farm. Uh, I don't like tilling the soil because we destroy the soil architecture. We destroy the, the, destroy the habitat for the microbes that live there. And, uh, and then it, it takes time for those microbes to reestablish a really good soil mix for the, for the plants. So for years, since two, uh, 2012, we had three, three different, well, we had actually four, but in this area here, we had three different hugel culture uh, systems where we dug out all the native soil. I removed the native soil. And here we had a six foot wide hugel culture bed here. Lots of compost, lots of woody material, paper products and all that. And we grew uh, potatoes and different plants in here. We had a three foot wide section right over in here. I'm not sure it's, it's easy to see, but it'd be right down in this area. And then we had the large Hugelkultur mound, which was really high, and I uh, made a video uh, last year or the year before deconstructing it and all. And so there's really beautiful, rich soil in these three spots here. There's also another spot over here and right about where these weeds are as well. But I took uh, the track loader down here with the rototiller on it and I decided next to this I'm just going to scrape the surface now uh, last year or the year before I can't remember right now I brought the York rake down here because we had lots of stone that I picked up and it took me three weeks with the York rake the uh, the grading bucket on the excavator and uh, Optimus Prime my front end loader on the case 995 to get all the rocks out of here so all the big ones are gone from here these are just the small ones in this area here but I decided uh, I wanted to try the excavator back in this area and see. So this this is had all had stuff growing on it for several years, and it had been picked rock clean in the past, and not picked clean recently. Then we get down to the area where I had not grown things in the past. So this is more of our native soil right here, where I haven't been picking rocks yet. And I look at this, and, I, and I'm no longer young enough uh, or have the energy or the desire to spend days picking rocks like this. Because what you, what you do is you come out here and you, and you rototill for about three to four inches, pick up all the rocks, then you go over it again, and you repeat this three or four times. And I look at this now, and, and what I used to think about, yeah, I can do that. Uh, doing this over this whole area seems nuts to me. Pond seven is the water level has dropped down about three, three and a half feet so far, maybe close to four feet. We really need that rain. But you can see the relative uh, concentration of rocks to the soil that's here. And we have been growing lawn on this area for quite some time. So you could see it's no longer gravel, it's a darker soil. But as we get even lower, there's gonna be even a higher concentration of rocks to soil. Uh, so 
this idea isn't going to work out so I'm going to be selling the rototiller that I just bought uh, and hopefully I can get as much money out of it as I as I paid for it or close to it uh, the benefit if somebody around here wants one they won't be paying $500 to have it shipped to them so this is it this is what our native soil looks like right here uh, so that's why in many of the places uh, our gardens and all we build soil on top of our our base uh, soil here so I think what I'll do is I'll use hound with the bucket work this whole area out get it somewhat uh, flat get this whole area flat and where we're going to put the blueberries we'll be building up the soil uh, on top of these areas so it's going to take me more time to do this unfortunately I was hoping to be able to get this all set for fall to transplant the blueberry plants down into this area but after having uh, the rototiller go through here and just get the first three to four inches I could see it's uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense to well I don't I'm not looking forward to doing this so we're gonna find another way we're gonna smooth this all out Yes, I will end up picking up a lot of these rocks in here. And this will go down to the excess roads around the beaver dam, or beaver, uh, beaver dam walls and all. So, this is what our native soil looks like. And really, I'm not too encouraged to, to try and do more here. So, we're gonna approach it like we did the rest of the property. We're gonna build soil on top of this area once I get it dressed up some and all. Oh, and here, this rock here. Now this, the, when the glaciers came in and deposited so much of this, this stone and all this gravel in this property here, it dropped one of these uh, um, opportunistic boulders. This one here, these two here came from a little bit higher up there, uh, up where the ash trees where I've been working in that that forest area there. So these these end up looking like this is all that was sticking out of the ground, and the rest of it was beneath the ground. This one here was right over in this area here, and my buddy. Uh, John uh, from Gilbert Excavating, when he came over to pull my track loader up out of here so we could replace a, a hydraulic line that broke when I was way down there in the base of the pond, uh, I said, hey, reach over here and grab this, this stone. Uh, I start, started digging it, digging it out with Bumblebee, the mini excavator, and it was right here. This is where this stone came out of, or this boulder came out of, rather. Uh, John reached over with his big excavator and pulled it out. That would have taken me with Bumblebee, you know, six hours, four to six hours to dig that out and make a a, uh, a 45 or less degree angle so I could work it up out of the ground and all, where it, hey, John had it out of the ground in three minutes. <laughs> so, so when the glacial deposits came through this area we have lots of these th this size stone throughout the whole area and you've seen some of the walls that i built with the other stones but they go all the way up to this size all over the property these are all ones that i this one i found when i was cleaning out the area getting ready for the pond here these two here when i was just this season so this is something that happens every year i get three or four of these big boulders as i'm digging around putting in a swale, digging a pond, or whatever. So that's the reason I think I'm going to abandon using the rototiller idea to try and get things set for, uh, for our gardens and all. So if you have any comments or questions or know of anybody near Syracuse, Oswego, New York, that's interested in a brand new 84-inch wide uh, heavy-duty, super heavy-duty rototiller, uh, we'll be selling ours. Thanks so much for watching, folks. Uh, give us a thumbs up. If you think this was of value, feel free to leave comments. And stay safe. Don't work this hard. This is nuts. Take care now. Bye-bye.